Hi guys, good afternoon and welcome you all to this half a day session on AZ204. So we'll start the session by 2.10. I repeat, we'll start the session by 2.10 as we are expecting more participants to join. So we'll wait till 2.10 and we'll go ahead with the intro part. Thank you. Guys, please note, we'll start the webinar at 2.10, sharp at 2.10, as the other participants are still joining us. So we'll wait till 2.10 and we'll go ahead with this uh, webinar. Thanks for your patience, guys. Thank you.
good afternoon to one and all so we'll start with the session i hope you all can hear me and my screen is visible to all so welcome you all to this half half for day session on az204 certification so myself shaitali here your host for this webinar so today's event sponsor is synergetics as talking about the synergetics so uh, synergetics is one of a kind corporate learning solution company uh, we help uh, corporate as well as individual uh, profession to get the relevant technological solution and helps to be on the top of this competition we are not only restricted to the group trainings but we also provide a uh, certification training also you as you can see on the screen we have master solutions we have onboarding solution then we have reskilling solution certification solution then we have certification plus add on solution cloud adoption solution then we have architecting solution practice playbook solution latest technology training solution and emerging technology training solution then today's session is organized by atc community that is azure tech community and sponsored by synergetics and microsoft uh, so our atc community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technologies uh, you just need to follow our meetup groups which are an emerging technology community for all then we have pune community for pune cars the community is specifically made for surat emerging technology community then we have azure tech community in nagpur for nagpur cars so you just need to install the meetup app on your phone or on your device and you just have to follow our communities to get the upcoming uh, webinars and workshop updates so i will share the links for this uh, following communities in the chat box so you just have to go and follow us then small small code of conduct that you all need to follow please note that you all you all are not allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording if you want to get the access for this recording of the webinar uh, we will put up the recording on our uh, youtube channel so you can go and get the access over there again the youtube channel link will be given to you all in the chat box so you you all can go and subscribe to our youtube channel as well then today's speaker for this webinar uh, on az204 certification is mr makra bohit he is an mct and currently working as a practice head at synergetics then as you can see on the screen we have agenda for this webinar what participants will get to learn then moving ahead so you can see over here uh, as your developer associate the overview of this uh, certification az204 certification then the journey path has been mentioned over here which will be explained to you all in depth by our speaker ahead in this webinar then we are providing the exam voucher for you all for all the certifications at 40% discounted rate so for more information you can connect us on given details i will share this details in the chat box you can just go and mail us or you can just connect us on our whatsapp number so we can guide you for the same then we are providing the learning achievement badge for az204 so this learning achievement badge is for no cost so you just have to follow certain steps and go on to a url to redeem the badge so again i will share this steps for this learning achievement badge in the chat box so you can follow the same and get your learning achievement badge activated then we have next certification training on ai 102 which is on coming saturday 15th of april a uh, full day training it will be from 10 am to 6 pm the registration link will be provided to you all in the chat box so you can go and register yourself for this aim 
then do follow us on our social media platforms to get the daily updates regarding the webinars workshop and more also it will be great if you all will share your feedback on the feedback form by the end of the webinar so feedback form link will be provided to you all by the end of the webinar in the chat box so you just have to go and submit your feedback on that that's all from my side uh, thank you all over to you makran sir thank you yeah thanks chetali you are audible chetali <laughs> yeah so we can hear you yes yeah okay thank you thank you chetali yeah good afternoon all uh, Uh, my name is Makran, and I'll be a uh, presenter uh, for today's session. So I'll be sharing my screen now. Um, yeah, I hope my screen is visible to you. Okay. Um. So as you can see, um, uh, my name is Makrand Makrand Koir. Uh, I'm Microsoft certified trainer. Uh, I'm certified into Azure uh, DevOps, you know, uh, which is AZ400. As well as I'm certified, uh, you know, Azure developer and Azure administrator. So I've completed AZ204 and uh, uh, 104, you know, along with uh, the fundamental exam also AZ900. Okay. So this session, this half day session, okay. Um, I have categorized into you know two parts. Uh, so first up, I'll be explaining you, um, you know, uh, the do's and don'ts, uh, you know, uh, regarding the exam. You know, okay. So how to prepare for the exam? You know, where to you know, hunt for the uh, right kind of resources? Uh, you know, okay. Um, and uh, you know, uh, what to you know uh, take in the mind uh, when we go for an examination okay so that we will be discussing in the first half uh, you know so maybe about an hour we will spend in that you know? uh, and second part uh, we will discuss technically you know? so um, we will be talking about um, you know one uh, core service uh, which is uh, azure app service uh, and uh, uh, we will see uh, in detail demos uh, of that app service also. You know? So I'm having in mind, uh, you know, okay, uh, three to four demos. Okay, so uh, we will be executing them you know, uh, one after another. Okay, uh, just to uh, to be precise, uh, you know, uh, uh, if I talk about that demos, uh, you know, uh, we will see first. Um, how to create uh, you know, uh, app service by using a portal, uh, then by using Azure CLI from a cloud shell. You know? Okay, we will go and uh, you know uh, deploy a code. Okay, that may be a .NET code, Java code, or maybe a pure HTML code. You know? Okay, we will be looking at uh, the application uh, which is live. Okay, uh, then after that. Uh, uh, we will see how to you know work with the git you know uh, just to enable that continuous integration and kind of a continuous deployment uh, you know, okay process to simulate that kind of a process we will be uh, you know uh, looking at second demo uh, of that and third demo we will be you know okay, talking about um, uh, deployment slot you know we will be understanding the deployment slot uh, you know okay and uh, we'll we'll just go and understand uh, you know, one of the deployment pattern which is available, uh, which is blue green deployment pattern. OK, uh, so we'll be talking about that uh, you know, conceptually as well as uh, we'll be looking, you know, looking at the uh, practical also related to that. OK, and um, you know, uh, last demo uh, we, we will uh, do like, like this. Uh, so um, I will go and create uh, you know, okay, uh, the web app. OK. Uh, for a web app, a web API, you know, uh, web API will be connecting, you know, uh, to the Azure uh, storage account, okay, and uh, that web API, web API will be connected by the web application. You know? So kind of, you know, okay, multi-tier application, client-server architecture kind of, a, you know, okay, uh, 
we will simulate uh, you know, okay in the fourth demo okay so that is you know overall uh, structure you know okay of this and um, okay uh, if you if you want you know okay um, um in detail training you know you can get in touch with uh, chaitali um, okay uh, because uh, we are also having uh, you know okay uh, five days of uh, you know okay um, uh, workshop uh, which is conducted uh, by various trainers you know okay and uh, that will be you know okay in detail uh, you know okay workshop uh, so you will get to know uh, that uh, you know uh, practically also you know okay so you will be able to do it uh, you know, on the practicals also you will be able to perform it uh, practically also okay okay uh, so let's get started uh, with this session okay uh, so if you look at this you know uh, so these are the uh, skill majors you know as of now they are having it for azure you know okay uh, 204 examination is it 204 examination okay so if you look at the first section you know okay there is a uh, you know highest weightage which is you know um, develop azure compute solution you know which got about uh, 25 to 30 percent of you know okay entire weightage a uh, second topic uh, if you just look at you know, okay uh, you are having azure storage account okay uh, so maybe <clears throat> in the first topic you know uh, if you if you look at the first topic uh, so your app services uh, you know, uh, let me just tell you uh, some of the important topic uh, from every you know section okay so if you look at the first topic you know first section so your app services uh, you know uh, your azure function your logic app you know so these are some of the important topic from the first section you know? so you should see them you know in detail along with that um, the concept of uh, you know, um, if you have a practical understanding of a docker that will also help because some of the concept of um, acr you know azure container registry and aci you know azure container instances you know are also uh, be the part of uh, you know, azure compute solution okay so overall these are the topic uh, you know okay which got uh, you know 30% 25 to 30% of a weightage second important topic is uh, uh, azure storage right? so in that uh, the understanding of a storage account is you know important okay and then um, you now the concept of a rdbm is okay will help okay concept of a no sql databases will also help right? okay so uh, so you are here you are having azure uh, sql databases okay and cosmos db along with the storage account so these are the topic uh, you know okay uh, which you should focus on you know, okay uh, while studying about this particular section the next category you are having uh, the azure security you know, okay so in that uh, the most important topic is um, azure active directory you know uh, you should have a proper understanding of azure active directory you know okay uh, and along with that active directory um, you should know some of the services like uh, key vault services you know? okay um, then uh, in the storage account there is something called as a you know a sas token shared access uh, signature you know okay so these are some of the topic which are you know okay important from uh, this uh, category okay if you look at this the fourth category monitor and troubleshoot uh, you know azure solution um so from that category you know uh, your most important service is um, azure monitor service right? okay is the most important service so you should you know okay know the azure monitor service you know okay in that um, how to create alerts you know okay what do you mean by you know okay uh, uh, logs you know activity log you know okay uh, then log analytic workspace to store a uh, you know logs 
so you should know you know okay specifically about um, azure monitor that is the most important topic from this uh, category okay and if you look at the last topic uh, you know, okay uh, connect and consume azure services okay so if you look at this topic uh, so your concept of um, you know your event grid you know okay uh, your uh, uh, messaging services you know okay so messaging services uh, you know okay these are the important uh, you know okay uh, from this particular you know category so i have listed down uh, you know okay all the important uh, you know topics from every functional group you know so this every point uh, as per the microsoft microsoft call these as a functional group you know so next slide we will just briefly discuss you know okay from every functional group you know which are the important uh, you know uh, points we should uh, you know okay keep in mind while appearing for the examination okay you can see you know uh, from the uh, first functional group you know which got uh, 25 to 30% or british you know okay in that uh, you are having most important you know, app service and app service plan okay along with that uh, you know okay azure container instance azure container registry you know along with that azure function okay and uh, you know, if you are having a knowledge of a uh, logic app also you know that will also help okay and you know along with that you know okay you should know um you know okay uh, you should know practically what is virtual machine you know okay uh, if you look at under the virtual machine also there are a few concept uh, such as uh, availability you know set availability zone you know okay virtual machine scale set you know something called as a load balancer you know okay so these you know okay uh, these you know topic knowledge uh, you know will definitely will help you okay uh, if you uh, look at that availability set there are again two you know keywords which are important for you know, this exam point of view uh, which are fault domain and update domain you know? okay so if you have knowledge about that fault domain and update domain okay okay which will certainly help you okay so you should you no know, okay um aware of these core concepts you know okay and uh, at least these core concepts you should have tried you know okay uh you know, practically how to create them you know okay in the portal okay and uh you know, okay uh using azure cli also how to create a resource using azure powershell how to create a resource using azure cloud shell how to create a resource you know okay what is azure resource manager you know how to create a particular resource by using azure resource manager how to deploy a particular template you know so that knowledge you know okay will certainly help you you know while appearing for this exam okay The second functional group, you know, okay, that we are having um, Azure Storage, okay, and uh, in this, if you look at uh, uh, storage account, is the most important service. Uh, you know, okay, so you should understand you know, the concept of a storage account. Okay, and if you just look at the storage account, you know, there are four core services. You know. Uh, so, for example, first service is the storage service is block storage. You know, the second one is a file storage. You know, file share or file storage. You know, third one is the uh, queue storage, and uh, fourth one is the table storage. Okay. So, out of that, you know, for this exam point of view, you know, your block storage is important, the important, I would say. You know, okay, and then you know, okay, your file this file storage is not uh, for this examination okay but the knowledge of that you know okay will help you will give you advantage you know but that is not for uh, you know, this particular examination 204 file storage is not there uh, you have block storage okay you have queue storage and uh, table storage the knowledge of these these kind of a storage uh, you, know, you should should have 
Okay. Uh, then there are concepts like, uh, you know, okay, life cycle, blob, life cycle, you know, okay. So how to move a blob from one particular, you know, okay, life cycle stage to the another life cycle stage, you know, okay. For example, you know, blob has, you know, um, access tier called as um, hot access tier, coal access tier, and archive access tier, you know, okay. So if you want to move them from hot tire to cool tire, from cool tire to archive tire, you know, okay, how to move that, you know, okay. So that will, you know, tell you the life cycle. You know? So you'll have to configure a life cycle, you know, to do it like that. Okay. Then there are, um, you know, replication strategies. Okay. And, um, you know, um, so replication strategies, uh, you know, for example, um, you're having a concept such as, Okay, uh, your LRS and your um, ZRS, okay, your GRS, okay. So these are the concept, uh, okay. So LRS stands for locally redundant storage, ZRS stands for zone redundant storage, GRS stands for geo redundant storage and other two replication strategy, uh, you know, okay. So for example, RA ZRS, okay. And you are having RA uh, GRS, okay. So which is, you know, exactly similar to uh, ZRS and uh, you know, GRS, you know? okay. The knowledge of, you know, okay, uh, these is compulsory, you know, okay. So you should have the knowledge of what is LRS, ZRS, you know, GRS, RA, ZRS, RA, GRS. Right? So that knowledge, uh, you know, okay, will certainly you know give you upper hand. You know? Okay. The next, you know, category is a uh, security. Okay. Um, Azure security. You know, so you are having 20 to 25 percent of uh, weightage, you know, and from that, uh, you know, these are some of the important topics. Okay, so you should know what is Active Directory. You know, okay, um, what do you mean by tenant? You know, how to manage the tenant? You know, okay, if I want to create my own tenant, how to create my own tenant? You know? Okay, so if you have done that practically, you know, you know. You will be able to, you know, okay, um, you know, uh, relate to that practical because your questions, uh, you know, okay, are going to ask uh, from this category, you know, especially, okay. So if you have not done a practical, you know, then, uh, you know, okay, um, it is going to be very uh, difficult for you to, you know, attend these kinds of questions. Okay, so concept of, uh, you know, Active Directory, tenant, you know, okay. Uh, how to manage tenant, how to create your own tenant. Okay, then if I'm having, uh, you know, okay, uh, you know, uh, uh, 10 users, you know, 10 employees working in, uh, you know, organization working in a company, you know, so if I'm creating one company's, you know, okay, um, account, this kind of account, you know, that is I'm creating a you know, tenant for the company. Okay, so you can, you know, relate your organization, you know, is act as a, a tenant, you know, is an instance of an active directory. You, know? you can say tenant, you know, okay, is the instance of the active directory. Okay, so uh, those 10 employees, if you have to add them, you know, okay, so how to add them as a user, you know, okay, how to give a permissions to create some resources under that, you know, company. So that practical knowledge, you know, okay, will help, you know, okay. So that permissions part is, uh, you know, related to the RBAC, RBAC, you know, okay. Role-based, you know, okay, access control. RBAC stands for role-based access control, you know. So that will, that will guide you basically, you know, uh, 
how to you know give a permission so if i am having a organization i have created a organization you know and under that organization i am having a subscription you know and uh, i am having a 10 different users so i want to allocate for all the 10 user to you know create the resources under that subscription you know so how to give that permission so that you know will be managed by using this arbag which is role based access control okay then uh, you know key vault uh, you know, okay uh, is uh, basically used to you know a manage the secrets certificates you know so if i'm having um, you know the password to be store or okay uh, keys or certificate then i will go for you know azure key vault you know rather than you know um, storing those you know okay password in the application okay i will just go and you know use a key vault for that okay So understanding of the key vault is also important, uh, you know, okay, uh, for the for the exam. The next functional group uh, is uh, monitoring, you know, okay. So the concept of uh, you know, okay Azure monitor you know, is uh, the important part from this. Along with that, you know, okay. Um, you know what do you mean by you know ready caching you know concept of a caching you know okay in that if you look at uh, you know one resource is called as one service is called as azure ready caching you know so you know so that will help you from this particular category okay and the last functional group that we are having you know okay which is related to the you know okay uh, connecting the application you know okay so in this you know your concept of a event driven architecture okay various messaging services okay like for example event grid you know azure service bus you know okay or uh, then what's the difference between azure service bus and uh, you know queue storage you know okay then uh, what's the concept of a event uh, hub event grid you know so that knowledge you know okay will help you. so these are the overall you know the topics are there for the examination but you should keep in mind microsoft is upgrading this you know okay at least a year you know okay they are upgrading this you know okay so you know when you are going for a examination you know and at least before attempting an examination at least a week before you should visit you know the exam page so you should visit a exam page okay an exam page you know will look like uh, okay will look like this if you just go and search for on the google exam page of ac 10 oh, sorry ac 204 you know so that will take us to the exam page okay and this exam page you know okay uh will guide you you know okay what is the current you know curriculum what is the current curriculum that we are having for this examination so i will recommend you to you know okay just visit this before you know the examination because microsoft is doing daily you know okay or not daily then monthly you know update okay so last time they have updated this particular page uh, i think uh, this 28th april let's see i think this must be a typo you know okay but 27th of march something in 2023 so whatever with the latest curriculum you will get uh, you know in this page so you should you know okay remember this now there are more thing about this page that i want to tell you you know i'll be telling you but before that uh, you know, let us see 
um, uh, what is the prerequisite for you know giving this examination? OK, so as of now, OK, you are not having any prerequisite for you know this examination. So anybody can give this examination, you know, so if anybody is able to clear this examination, which is AZ 204. OK, then he is eligible for getting this certificate. OK, so as you are, you know, developer associate. So if you are able to clear one exam, you know, then you will become Azure developer associate. OK, uh, earlier you know, there was, you know, there were two examination you need to clear. You know, so you are having what uh, uh, something called as uh, Azure fundamental examination, which was also compulsory you know, in old days. OK, so in order to clear Azure. Fundamental. OK. So. You know, you need to complete AZ 900. You know? So these were the two examination earlier. It was compulsory. You know? And when you finish all, you know, both the examination, you will become Azure. You know, OK, developer associate. But now this. You know. This is not. Compulsory. But you know, I will hint, you know, highly encourage you, you know, okay, to appear for this examination, you know, before you take this examination, you know, okay. So if you, you know, appear for this examination, at least, you know, you will be clear with the, you know, uh, the foundational concept, and that foundational concept is also important, you know. So basic of a cloud computing. You know, OK, then what do you mean by high availability? You know, what do you mean by disaster recovery? What do you mean by scaling? You know, there are two types of scaling, scaling in, scaling out. You know, OK, then if you look at scaling, you know, OK, uh, sorry, uh, uh, scaling uh, uh, up and scaling you know, uh, out. So there are two types of a scaling, you know, OK, so that scaling type. You know, OK, then the concept of uh, elasticity. You know? So these are some of the concept which are you know, okay, important. You know? So. This concept you know, is not explicitly mentioned in this particular examination, you know, but those concepts are important, you know, which have been already covered inside this is in 900. You know? So if you are directly appearing for this examination, you know, OK, they you know, Assume that you are already aware of these concepts you know, and that concept will help you, you know, while attempting this particular exam. But bottom bottom line is <clears throat> there is no. Prerequisite as of now for this examination. You clear one exam, which is 204 examination easy 204 and you will become as your developer associate. OK. OK, and these are some of the uh, you know, frequently asked question uh, which are related to the you know, examination. So the passing score. You know, is 700. OK, out of 1000. OK, so 700 you should score 700 or of course more. OK, we should score to clear this examination. You know, um, if you look at the examination, you know, having uh, the questions uh, uh, which can be, uh, you know, single choice question, you have to select only one option or there can be, you know, uh, multi options uh, you know, questions also. You know, so how, you know, the multi you know, options questions will will be scored. So if you are having a one option for the you know, uh, question, if you given that uh, you know, option wrong, you know, if you mark that option as a wrong 
uh, you will of course not get the any kind of a score for that particular question. But if it is having what multiple uh, you know correct answer, you know out of that you have mark one correct, one incorrect. You know, so you will at least get a partial marks. You know, so there is no negative marking for this examination. You know, okay, so it is highly recommended to you know okay select all the you know options. Okay, whatever be the option they have, you know, tell, uh, you know, told you to, you know, select. You can just go and mark all the options. So do not leave any question. Okay, because there is no uh, negative marking. Okay, and uh, the one good thing about this is, you know, if you are having uh, two, you know, correct options. Then in that question itself, they have given like that. So, you know, uh, select any. OK, so if there are three correct option, then question itself, they have given like that. Select anything. OK, so they will tell you how many options are correct. You know, accordingly, you should choose you know, those, you know, those options. OK. And as I said, uh, there is no negative uh, you know, score for this. Uh, then uh, what's total number of question you can accept? Uh, you know, expect uh, there are no fixed number of a question, but uh, you know, okay, uh, you will get uh, somewhere between forty to sixty questions. You know, okay, uh, in one twenty to maximum one fifty minutes of time, you, you will have to complete. Okay. Okay. Then, you know, if you just visit this page, you know, I will say just bootmark this page. Okay. So till you give the examination. Okay. This is the same page. Okay. Which I have given you in the slide. Okay. So there are a lot of information about this examination. You know? Okay. So very first thing. If we just look at this and they have you know recently update updated this thing. So very first thing, you know, you should see this <coughs> exam sandbox. <coughs> you know, uh, if it is very first examination of a Microsoft, you know, if you are given this as a very first examination for the Microsoft, you know, so to get familiar of the exam pattern. You know, OK, and uh, exam UI. You know, OK, so this sandbox you know, will help you. OK, so to just familiar with the, you know, OK, exam pattern and exam UI. You know? So if you just go and click on this. OK. So that will open, you know, exam sandbox. So it is exactly same kind of a user interface you will get in the actual examination. You know. So if you are not given any kind of a Microsoft examination, you know, then it is highly recommend you to see this at least once before you go for the examination. OK. OK, then you know, OK, uh, it will it will tell you, you know, what is the passing score? OK, what is the la maximum time limit for this examination? OK, uh, what what total number of questions you are going to get for this examination? You know, OK, and how many uh, case studies uh, you will get you know, for this examination? You know? So depending on your exam, you know, OK, um, you will get uh, you know, these information. OK. And these are additional information. Okay, 
and exactly same kind of a screen you know um, for your actual examination not you will also get okay and uh, when we can start next you know, okay, we will get you know, the question like this so this will be you know one type of a question wherein you will have to choose only one option you know so one correct option okay so i'm just marking it as it is uh, okay randomly anything you know if there are multiple options you know okay so from here multiple choice question it is you know but it is they're going to ask explicitly you know okay how many uh, you know option to mark you know so that, that will tell you explicitly how many options you know you should select Okay, so this is one more type of a question. You know, okay, wherein you know, okay, they will you know, tell you to drag and drop. You know, so these are the question. You know, this is the question, and based on this question, you know, they will tell you, you know, okay, just to drag and drop. You know, so you have to drag from here. You know, whatever be the options you are having. So for example, you know, I'm just moving this over here. Okay, so you have to drop into this particular box only. You no, know, okay. You have to drop to this particular box. Okay, so maybe table I'm having in the office. Okay, then bookshelf maybe office. In the office, just okay. So I'm just you know, randomly selecting anything. You will have, you will get, you know, this kind of a questions also, drag and drop kind of a question. Okay. Then, you know, again, this is, you know, uh, going to be a question like this. Okay. So you will have to drag and drop, but you know, in this particular. You know your sequence of the you know uh, the options is going to be important. Okay, so it is important to you know place the you know okay right option in the right sequence. Okay, you know, so as of now, as for their question, I'm just selecting you know okay randomly. Okay, you have to select um, this random okay the option. Of course, not random option. You will have to choose a correct option. Okay, so this is one of another kind of a questions. You know, drag and drop question you will get. Okay, this is one more kind of a question wherein they will give you. You know, okay, rather than giving a option, they will give you a. You know, okay, um, some kind of a you know, uh, uh, dialogue box wherein have wherein have to you know, okay, just select the appropriate options. Okay, just we'll have to click this appropriate option. Okay, of course, based on this question. Okay, then there is one more kind of a question. Of course, based on that requirement, we'll have to choose uh, you know, right kind of option from the drop down list. Okay, another dialog box you will have to choose. You know, okay, the correct option. Okay, now this kind of a question, you know, okay, you have to keep in mind, you know, okay, they are given the question and they have given the existing environment also and they are given the requirement also, you know. So if you just, you know, okay, uh, do not pay attention over here. If you read this question, it, you will get half information about the question. You will not, you know, get complete idea about the question. To get the complete idea about the question, you should see the existing environment. You know, you should see the, you know, okay, you know, problem statement. You should see the requirement, what they are asking. Okay, so these kinds of a question, you know, okay, will take lot of time, you know, in reading. Okay, and you know, you will get the uh, maximum 120 to 150 minutes of time. You know, so if you, you know, go without planning, you know, okay, uh, then it is. 
difficult for you to you know clear this examination you know okay so planning you know is very very crucial you know okay uh, in this so you will have to plan your exam very well you know okay if if it is taking a longer time to attempt you know you, i will say go to the next and you come back you know okay later when you whenever you get the time you know so i feel it is going to take a longer time so i i will mark as a review okay and i can go to the next one okay and uh, whenever i complete everything you know i'll come back and okay you know attend uh, that option okay and if you look at this one you know this is again having additional information over here okay so again you are having additional information over here no apart from these question okay and then finally it will take me to this this kind of a screen wherein it will show you how many total number of a question you know how many uh, you have did not answered how many you have marked for review and so i can go to that mark for review no i can directly go to that you know screen okay i can choose appropriate option come back and you know okay if you are having time you can review this questions if any uh, otherwise you can say finish you know so once i finish okay i will get the score immediately you know once i finish this examination okay i will get the score immediately instantly i will come to know whether i am you know uh, cleared this examination okay or not okay and uh, maximum within uh, you know uh, 24 to 48 hours you know okay you should get a certificate you know in your email and certificate of course you have cleared the examination okay in case if you did not clear you know okay you will not uh, get certificate okay remember that uh, you know uh, there is uh, no re attempt you know for this examination as in once you schedule the examination you know once you have given one attempt you know okay that uh, voucher will expire you can't give uh, you no know, multiple uh, you know attempt you know from the same voucher you know okay so if you in case failed the examination you know for the next time if you want to give a examination you will have to reschedule the examination okay and let me just tell you one more point uh, you know okay uh, which i you know face actually during my examination so uh, nowadays uh, microsoft allowing us to uh, you know give this examination uh, you know from home also along with the home i can just go and opt uh, you know any uh, official promatric center also to to appear for the examination you know okay but if you are giving from the home you know okay so you will have to make sure your internet speed is you know okay a uh, good your laptop you know the place where where you are uh, you know from where you are attempting this exam you know okay so you should test that you know before the examination okay so if you have selected you will be giving this examination from the home you know okay then you know okay uh once you schedule the examination you know they will send you a link to test your environment okay so during that testing you know if any problem has happened then you can you know okay think you know okay try to resolve that problem before the examination because that problem you know will definitely come you know okay in the actual examination also okay one such problem i will tell you you know okay so Uh, while giving this examination you know okay so we'll have to close all the application which i have opened so for example my you know these teams application my presentation and my you know okay uh, this web browser is open you know okay so all these application you know should be closed and you should close not only from here you know okay from you know task manager also you should it should be clear you know so there should not be any kind of application you know present over here in the task manager okay and uh, you know along with that 
you know okay uh, still it was giving me you know okay uh, in one of my examination it was giving me one problem because of one service you know so i think uh, that service name is you know something called as pes desk you know so because of uh, you know uh, we are taking a remote machine you know okay lot of time we are taking a remote machine this this service is you know okay useful for that okay so this service you know okay should be you know killed explicitly okay otherwise it will give you any you know error okay and you will have to resolve that error you know okay when it is coming the error you know okay during the testing type you do not have to ignore that you will have to resolve that error you know and uh, to make sure you will go for the examination otherwise the similar kind of error it will get it in the actual examination also and unfortunately you won't be able to attempt the examination and this kind of a problem will happen only if you are giving this examination from your home okay if you are giving the examination from any official promatric center you know then it's not your responsibility and then they will manage you know, okay this uh, problem okay one more point uh, you know i will highlight so there will be a uh, one proctor you know okay uh, who will be constantly monitoring you okay and uh, you know okay uh, you should have a separate room you know okay if you are planning to give this examination from the home you know okay and uh, that door should be closed you know nobody should enter to that room okay if it is having a windows then you know uh, the curtain should be closed you know okay so you should you know give uh, uh, what the photograph before the examination you know okay uh, of entire room you know all four directions you should give okay so that you know okay uh, uh, that will you know, the prior to the examination okay so once you checked in to the examination you know okay they will tell you you know all these things okay <clears throat> one more thing i will uh, encourage you to look at these exam prep videos you know okay before you know you schedule this examination you know so it is recommended that you should see these videos okay so you see 204 exam prep videos okay and if you see this videos okay okay so there are five functional group as i said you know okay so every functional group you know okay they are having a separate video okay so at least okay see all these five videos you know okay so you will get to know you know okay what the concept i should focus on you know during the examination okay which is the important concept okay so you know before the examination i will say you know you just see this once at least you know and it is not uh, you know long video so it is 20 minutes or 10 minutes you know okay video so but of course this is not a technical video you know they will not tell you anything technically you know but they will guide you you know okay what are the concepts are important okay so we have already discussed about this uh, you know okay exam prep videos and there are five exam prep videos okay as i said um for every functional group one video you know it is there okay um so now <laughs> uh we will discuss you no know, okay uh, now we will discuss something technically you know, okay so as of now we were discussing about the exam point of view 
Yeah? Okay. What are those and what are those? You know, which are the point? You know. Okay. We should focus on. Okay. And uh, one more point I will tell you before we go into this. It is highly recommended to see. You know. Okay. You know. To see this. You know, so before examination, before you appear for the examination, you know, it is, you know, okay, um, recommended to complete, you know, all these things. So as per the learning plan, okay, as per the skill measure, you know, okay, they're having, uh, you know, okay, all these modules. Okay. So it is, you know, okay, necessary to complete all these modules. Okay. So of course it is available on the Microsoft page, you know, okay. So you can go and visit it at any time. Okay. So if you do not have that much of time, you can opt for instructor laid trend. You know? Okay. So for example, Synergetics is providing, uh, you know, okay. Um, instructor led training, you know, okay. Uh, for you, uh, you know, okay. For you like professional like you, you know, okay. So we are having open session, you know, okay. Uh, so on every Saturday and Sunday, you know, okay. So you can opt for you know, that kind of a session also. Okay. Or if you want to, you know, do the study, you know, uh, based on your own pace, you know, okay, you can refer this. This is also more than enough. Okay. <coughs> but if you do it, uh, you know, this, you know, uh, for doing a practical, you know, uh, you will you know get any kind of a difficulties okay for doing a practical um, you will not you will require uh, one subscription but that subscription also you can get it free okay but uh, to get the free subscription at least you should register for the microsoft you know uh, the page so i'll tell you So this is the website, you know, okay, uh, you should register yourself, okay. So you can create an, you know, uh, Azure account freely and, and you will be getting one free subscription for 12 months, okay. So you will be able to use that for 12 months, you know, okay. In that 12 month, you will be getting $200. You know, will be getting $200. Okay. But these $200, you know, okay, is available for you only for 30 days. Okay. So if you consume that $200 in 10 days, you know, okay, your account will be disabled, you know, okay. And you know if you are having after 30 days hundred dollar remaining you know in your account, then also your account will be disabled. Okay. But remember one thing, you will have to provide your you know credit card detail you know okay while registering you know, for the free account. But do not worry, Microsoft will not charge you until and unless you upgrade your account to pay as you go. Okay, otherwise Microsoft will not charge you anything. <clears throat> okay, so that credit card only for, you know, okay, uh, just to verify your, uh, you know, your authenticity. Okay. And let me just uh, you know repeat one point. So if you if you have you know created some resources and if you you know keep them as active you know for you know a long time and if you forgot to you know uh, delete them or forgot to stop them, you know in that case what will happen? You know, in that case your two hundred dollar will be you know consumed. And once your two hundred dollar will be consumed, then automatically your account will be disabled. You know, it will not charge you. 
you know on your credit card it will not charge you until and unless you upgrade yourself your account as pay as you go you know so okay without any fear, uh, fear you can you can register you know okay and you can uh, you know uh, do your hands dirty okay in this okay so this will give you you know okay uh, good uh, you know practice of azure Okay, uh, now it's demo time. Uh, so as I said, you know, okay, we will be uh, looking at couple of demos. Okay, at least I have planned uh, you know, four demos. Okay, and we will be talking about um, you know, Azure App Service. Okay. So let's discuss. You know, okay, before we jump into the demo, you know, okay, let us discuss. You know, okay, what is Azure App Service? Uh, there are few questions. I'll take those questions and I'll just uh, move ahead. Uh, so day R day is asking in order to take AZ 204 certification, we need to have AZ 104. Is that correct? No, uh, it is not compulsory to you know complete 104 certification. Uh, we can complete uh, 204 and you will become uh, Azure uh, you know, developer associate. You know. To become Azure administrator, you will have to com complete AZ-104 certificate. You know? So these are two different tracks. You know? So if you finish 104, you will become Azure administrator. If you complete 204, you will become Azure developer. OK, and. Uh, uh, of course, if you want to move ahead and if you want to, you know, OK, go for you know, uh, DevOps, uh, then it is compulsory to you know complete either 104 or 204. You know, for the DevOps, it is not uh, you cannot give uh, you know okay uh, easy 400 exam directly. Of course, you can give, but you if if you are passing that examination, you will not get certificate unless you you clear you know okay 104 or 204. No, it is not. Uh, Ritesh uh, is asking following up the same question. No, earlier it was required. So Ritesh is asking uh, for 204 examination. It is compulsory to uh, you know complete 900 AZ 900 exam. Yes or no? You know? Okay. So it is not compulsory. Earlier uh, it was compulsory, but nowadays it is not compulsory. Nowadays you can complete only one examination. And as I said. You know, 204 examination, and you will, you know, okay, uh, become as your, you know, developer. Yeah, uh, other people are also, you know, answering. Yeah, good. good. Okay. Um, so, what do you mean by you know uh, Azure App Service? So, what is the meaning of App Service? So, Azure App Service uh, is the HTTP-based service for hosting your web application. You know, web application REST API. You know, or you know, some kind of a mobile uh, you know application also. You know, mobile kind of a backend application also, of course. Okay. So 
I can host my web application. I can host my REST API or web API, you know, okay, on this, uh, you know, okay, uh, app service. And of course, okay, uh, if you look at, you know, okay, uh, the programming languages such as .NET, Java, Python, you know, okay, so you are getting, you know, okay, varieties of our programming languages, uh, you know, okay, and uh, you know, the options of operating system, you know, you will get both Windows operating system as well as Linux operating system, you know, okay, you will get uh, over here. So app service, you know, okay, you understand first, app service is one of the type of a pass service, you know, there are three kinds of a service, you know, I hope, uh, uh, you are having a knowledge about this. So you're having two types, uh, three types of a service, you know. Uh, the first one is infrastructure as service. Second one is platform as service. You know, third one is software as service. Okay. These concepts are not there in the user for examination, you know, okay. But these concepts are there in the you know 900th examination, which is your fundamental examination. But nowadays it is not compulsory. That's why people are not uh, you know of course go for you know these kinds of examination. But the knowledge of these you know okay will help you. Okay. So before you appear for this you know 204 examination, at least you should go through you know okay the learning material which is available for the 900. It is not compulsory for you to give that examination, but it is recommended to you know gain the knowledge because this will help you. Okay. So it is one of the platform as a service. OK, so. If I talk about briefly, what is infrastructure as a service? What is uh, you know, OK platform as a service and what is you know uh, software as a service? You know. Okay, um, let's say machine machine will be having okay some kind of a hardware. Okay, uh, maybe um, you know okay that will be having some kind of a you know network network and hardware. Okay, on top of that, uh, you know, okay we will be having you know uh, some kind of a, uh, operating system whether it is Windows operating system or it is Linux operating system. Okay. Then after that, you know, okay, I will be having, you know, okay, uh, on top of a software uh, operating system, I will be, you know, okay, installing any kind of a software, you know. So for example, I am, uh, I want to deploy a .NET application, so I need that .NET, uh, you know, core or you know, .NET framework, you know, okay. So that kind of a runtime, I will be, you know, required to install, you know. And on top of that, you know, I need, you know, um, the application, okay, and I need to maintain a data, you know, okay. So let's say I'm having application and I want to maintain a data. So if you look at this, you know, so this is my very last layer will be hardware, you know, or you can say a network, you know, so. You know, uh, club them into one category only because of that, you know space constraint. You know, hardware or network. You know, on top of that, uh, you know, okay, I will be having an you know, operating system. Okay, on top of that, you know, I will be you know, okay uh, installing any kind of a software. You know, okay, so maybe. Runtime, maybe I'll be, you know, okay, installing Java or .NET okay, or any other, you know, software. And ultimately, if I'm installing a .NET, you know, I need a .NET application, okay, and I need to maintain a data. If I'm having a Java, then I need to install a dot Java application and I need to maintain a data. 
Okay. So if you look at this, you know, okay, stack over here. Okay. So if you are using, you know, okay, uh, the infrastructure as a service. Okay. So if you are using this infrastructure as a service, then, you know, okay, some kind of a hardware will be provided by the Azure to you. Okay. Then, on top of that hardware, which operating system to install, you know, on top of that, you know, operating system, which software runtime to install, what application to install, that is the decision, you know, okay, we can take. Okay, so only thing, hardware and network, you know, okay, part will be provided by the Azure. Okay, and rest all, rest all part, we'll have to take care, you know. So one of the example of you know okay um, the infrastructure as a service is virtual machine, you know. So VM is very uh, you know okay good example of you know okay infrastructure as a service. So wherein okay uh, target uh, you know okay uh, hardware or target uh, you know okay um, network will be given to you, you know okay will be provided to you. But on top of that, uh, what kind of operating system I need? Okay, I can decide, you know, whether I want to, you know, use what Windows operating system or um, the Linux operating system. I can decide that, you know. And once you select that, <clears throat> once you decide that, it will, it will give you a complete flexibility, you know. Okay, to install any kind of a software you want, you know, that is .NET or Java. And on top of that, you know, okay, any kind of application I can, you know, um, uh, uh, deploy. Okay. But if you look at platform as a service, okay. So platform as a service, you know, okay. So your hardware network will be provided by, you know, the cloud vendor, which is Azure. On top of that, operating system will also will be provided by, you know, okay, the cloud vendor. You will have to choose what, you know, okay, um, runtime you want to install, you know, okay, on that. Okay, and will be provided by the cloud vendor. So all these three things, you know, will be provided by, you know, okay, Azure to you. Okay, so you do not have to worry about, uh, you know, okay, where my application is running, you know, on what machine it is running. Okay, so you will have to just think about your application. Okay, and you should maintain your data, you know, so you should maintain your application and the data. Okay, so underlying you know okay infrastructure will be handled by the azure you know so you are using a platform as a service you know okay so in the platform as a service you know i do not have to manage all these things runtime operating system and you know hardware i have to manage only my application you know so app service is one of the you know pass service platform as a service Are you getting it? Okay, and software as a service, you know, okay, that means everything will be provided to you, you know, okay, including, you know, okay, your application, you know, okay, your runtime, operating system, hardware will be provided by to you, you know, okay, the Azure. The very good example for this software as a service is, uh, you know, your Outlook, you know, so everything will be provided by the Azure. You know, only thing I should remember that credential, you know, okay, and everything else will be provided by the Azure. Okay. But it is highly important you should know, you know, these, you know, these two services, infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. There are many, uh, you know, services from the platform as a service category you will have for this examination. Like for example, very important, you know, okay. Um, uh, this thing, app service, function app, then you are having, you know, a SQL DB, Cosmos DB, you know, okay. So all these are the, you know, from the platform as a service category. Okay. So,
so whenever i want to deploy my application you know okay so of course i will be knowing what kind of application i am having you know okay so whether i am having a dotnet based application or java based application you know okay so on the basis of that i have to create you know okay appropriate app service on the azure okay and once i go and create uh, you know okay um, the appropriate app service you know into the azure you know we will get uh, you know inbuilt feature like built in auto scaling support you know this is you know the most important feature which will be provided by the azure to us you know so uh, so if i am if i'm having uh, my application okay and uh, you know suddenly the load on my application increase you know okay so then whether to you know scale up or you know okay whether to scale out you know so that i can decide okay so that automatic scaling based on certain condition we can define okay so that option is uh, you know okay is highlight of uh, any kind of a cloud okay so auto scaling feature you know okay is you know the important functionality you know i will get from any kind of a cloud okay and um, i was talking about uh, you know earlier you know, there are two types of a scaling you know uh, vertical scaling and horizontal scaling you know so vertical scaling you know these are the two types scale up and scale down and horizontal scaling you know these are the two types scale out and scale in okay but this will supports the auto scaling feature uh this supports a uh, continuous integration feature also you know okay uh, by using um, you know okay very famous azure devops you know or by using uh, any one of the github bitbucket you know, or you know i can go and make use of a local get also you know so we'll work on you know uh, this uh, local get and we'll see you know how to you no know, work with this in order to do integration continuous integration okay then there is a concept called as deployment slot you know okay so we'll see uh, we will understand you know okay the meaning of a deployment slot uh, okay and the need of a deployment slot uh, we will understand that okay and uh, uh there are app service plan okay Uh, available for you know windows uh, operating system as well as for the uh, linux based operating system also you know? so we are having both kind of operating system support okay uh, so before we discuss this you know okay let let me just go and discuss this now so when you go and create any kind of a web app you know web app does require you know the plan app service plan you know so i can go and create uh, you know any app service plan you know depending on my need okay and depending on my budget you know okay i can decide the app service plan you know to choose or i can choose you no know, any appropriate app service plan okay and once i choose once i select app service plan you know you remember that you know okay i can create multiple app and i can share that app service plan also you know that is you know okay uh, one point you should remember so i can have one app service plan you know and one app service plan can be shared you know between two applications two you know web application also okay because generally app service plan is going to cost you you know so i can you know if i want to save my cost you know so i can just 
no? Okay. Uh, share this same app service plan with the multiple application. Okay. <clears throat> so whatever be the feature which is provided by the app service plan, which is also going to be shared between these applications. Isn't it? Okay. So let's see now. Okay. Let's see in action. Okay. So how to create you know app service? Okay. So if you are looking at this particular you know okay website for very first time, you know, just let me just give you a quick uh, you know okay intro about this website. So this is the website. Okay, uh, portal.azure.com. You can see this website. And uh, I should register, you know, okay, or I should have a valid subscription with me. Okay. So then only I will be able to, you know, okay, uh, you know, use this website. Okay. So if you are not having a valid subscription, then these options, whatever you are getting it over here, no. So those options won't be, you know, visible to you. So you will see something like this. So I'm having, uh, let's suppose, say, I'll just switch my tenant. So one of the tenant I'm switching. So for example, I'm switching it to the TCS, let's say. Asking. Yes, let me just enter. Okay, so I've entered my ID. And let me just go and find out. So it is. Okay. So you will see, you know, okay, something like this. If you are not having a valid subscription attached, you will see like something like this. So you won't be able to you know, uh, create any kind of a, you know, okay, a resource because for this tenant, you know, for this TCS tenant, I do not have a valid subscription. You know, so whatever uh, my valid subscription, you know, I have attached to my primary tenant. I'll come back to my primary tenant. You know, so this is my. Primary tenant which I'm using for this this training. So I should go and switch this. So you should have a valid kind of a subscription. And uh, you know, as for my subscription, I'm having you know okay, this uh, that's this much of amount remaining as of now. Okay. And I can go and create, uh, you know, okay, any resource. You know. So for creating a resource, you know, you can search, you know, the required resource in this text box, in this search box, you know. So which resource you want? So let's say I want app service. So you can go and search for that, okay, and that will give you an option, you know, okay, to create an app service. So I can go and create an app service. OK, and that will you know, tell you uh, this app service will have to create in which uh, you know subscription. So as of now, I'm having a multiple subscription which is attached to this 
a primary directory you know so hence it is asking me you know which subscription you want to use you know? so i'm having you know uh, this subscription and visual studio uh, subscription also you know? so i'll just go and choose this uh, visual studio enterprise subscription and then which resource group you want to keep uh, you know your app service so for example i'll be creating a new resource group called as ac204 so that is a resource group i'll create okay and resource group you can you know uh, consider as a you know okay it's a logical grouping for many resources so i can keep what uh, multiple resources into one single resource group okay and the next part you know okay what is the name of your application you know so the name of my application i want to uh, you know okay create my uh, let's say synergetics you know so you know ultimately uh, this will be the url synergetics spoke dot azure websites dot net right if this is your you know website name on that website what kind of a code you want to you know okay um, you want to publish or do you have any kind of a docker image whether you want to you know publish that docker image or you have something called as a static web app you know? okay so which option you want to select you know so we'll go and choose a code now if it is you know you selected code what runtime stack you are using so that i should go and select so i should go and select so these are the options like for example i'm getting a dotnet go java you know uh, node js php python ruby so these are the options i am getting okay so let me just select dotnet and i'm choosing what uh, dotnet 6 okay and remember you know you selected what code as a dotnet 6 and you just remember what operating system you have selected you know okay so i am selecting what you know the operating system as windows you know and you remember for what reason you need an operating system you know so ultimately operating system you know it will be created some kind of a virtual machine on top of that you know this software will be installed and on top of that your application will be published and since it is dotnet core i can just go and have what uh, linux based as well as windows based operating system you know so i'll just go and choose uh, windows operating system then uh, in which region okay you want to keep this resource by the way uh, the concept of region you know okay region pair you know uh, then uh, there is a concept called as availability zone availability set you know okay so these are the concept you should aware before you you know okay uh, attempt this examination there is nothing explicitly mentioned but the knowledge of you know uh, these concept will definitely will help you <clears throat> and if you go for 900 examination all these concept are included in the 900 examination only the fundamental examination okay i'll just go and choose what uh, region has east us okay and you can see this i'm choosing you know this service app service plan you know? so i'm just using what uh, free app service plan you know so so rather than selecting a free app service plan i can just go and create a new app service plan okay 
and i can choose you know okay there are varieties of options are available you know so based on that option i can you know choose you know any options you know? so i'll just explore the different options which are available some people are telling uh, can you try docker and everything you know uh, of course we can try it uh, but uh, you require any kind of a image you know okay if you do not have a right kind of a image uh, you know, okay uh, so you know you won't be able to publish the you know application okay uh, so let me just try with this you know okay um, the application because i'm having you know the application um you know uh, what we will be publishing that ready with me you know? okay so as of now i'll just go with that application and later on okay i will tell you how to you know okay create an application with a container also okay so you can just go and choose what uh, the container which are ready made container which are available you know okay in in the cloud okay so that i'll show you uh, once i just done with this okay you can just go and choose uh, and uh, there is one more question i i would like to take uh, uh, if it is showing you the uh, you know error uh, you know uh, while creating a free account uh, that account might be you know uh, already created by you know okay by using that uh, uh, that email address okay so you just go and create a new outlook id microsoft id you know outlook id or live id okay and try to register you know that newly created live id or outlook id with the azure id so with that uh, you know newly created uh, live or outlook id you try to create a free account uh, you know on azure so that will help you but you will have to go and provide uh, the details of your you know okay uh, uh, the credit card you know you will have to provide that details of your credit card that is for sure now if you just go and you know uh, look at these plans you know okay so based on plan you know okay so these are popular plan okay so if you look at this one is a free plan so you do not have to pay anything okay but there are going to be you know okay uh, some restriction okay so you will not get any kind of a feature okay and total uptime you know for a day it's maximum of 60 minute you know you will get that okay so if you go you know okay and choose a higher plan you know okay you will get a better you know okay the facility in every plan okay so i will you know point this plan you know so you should understand you know okay this d1 plan b1 plan s1 plan you remember these plans you know okay because you know okay there will be a question in the examination okay they will give you a plan called as d1 plan you know okay and they will ask you some question whether it is having auto scaling available or not okay, okay. so if you not sure you know what is this d1 plan you know okay then uh, you won't be able to answer that kind of a questions 
Okay. So better the the better you plan choose, you know, uh, the higher amount you will have to pay. You know, okay. So you can see this is very expensive uh, service. You know, okay. So if you choose this particular you know plan, you know, so it will cost you around one lakh twenty five thousand per month. You know, minimum. So I'll just go and choose, uh, you know, okay, the standard plan. I'll choose standard plan, standard S1 plan. Okay, and I'll select next. Okay, and I'll just go and create this application. Okay, um. So people are telling uh, you know uh, me to create the application you know okay in some other way. So we will just go and have what uh, three to four application created uh, you know okay. So we'll try you know okay more thing and we'll try and explore this thing you know okay uh, when we create you know okay the other services other app services. Okay, so as of now let me just go and create this. And this will take at least, uh, you know, okay, one minute to create. OK, so my deployment is in progress. OK, so. The very first example, you know, OK, very first exercise that we are going to try. OK, so we are going to try to, you know, OK. Uh, deploy and. You know, web application. Uh, which is. Uh, available on the github we are going to try to deploy this application which is available on the github okay so we'll try and deploy this application and we should see the output of that application you know you know over here so let let us see my application is created my web app is created you know i'll just go just go to resource. I'll click on that. Go to resource. And I'll just browse that application. You know, so as of now, uh, you are able to see uh, the default, the page, default page. You can see. You no, know, over here you can see only default page. This is the output of a default page. No matter you install any kind of application, you will get this default page. Okay. Unless you are not having a, you know, any uh, file uh, published. So now I will go and, you know, okay, uh, make an application. Okay. So this application is already created. Okay. So I'll just go and open the cloud shell. You know, so can you see this button over here? Okay. Just beside this text box, you will get a, you know, button. You we'll have to click on that button to open the cloud shell. OK, so cloud shell uh, will allow you to run, you know, Azure CLI command or Azure uh, PowerShell command, you know, without having, you know, installed that Azure CLI or PowerShell module. You know, so if you do not have Azure CLI installed in your machine or Azure PowerShell module installed in your machine, you know, you can go and choose, you know, okay, this cloud shell, and uh, you know, for accessing this cloud shell, you do not require any, you know, okay, uh, software to install. You know? So as of now, you can see, I'm just using a bash, you know, so I'll be using a CLI command. Okay, so if you look at these, you know, it's a Linux 
you know, come on, I am just typing. So as of now, I don't have anything, uh, any application. So I'll just go and create. Uh, Folder called as HTML app. OK. And inside that folder. I'll just go. I'll go inside this HTML app folder and now, you know, OK, I will just you know, clone this. You know, machine. So whatever will be present, you know, on this you know, uh, URL. In this URL, whatever you are having, you know, okay. So if you just look at this, so this page is having these you know, HTML files, simple HTML files. So I'm trying to take a clone of these files in my in my cloud shell. Okay, so as of now, if you just see my HTML app is empty, I don't have anything. You know, but once I go and you know, okay, take a clone of this repository. Okay, so I will be able to see. Okay, uh, this project HTML docs. Hello world, you know, and if you just go inside HTML docs, hello world, you know, okay, so you will be able to see, you know, these folders CSS, font, images, index.html. OK, so all these files and folders you will be able to see. Isn't it? So what I'm do doing. You know, so I'm just cloning the Git repository. You know. So I'm cloning the Git repository. You know, OK, so once I do a clone. This repository will available on my local you know, machine also. Once it is available on your machine, you know, you can use as if you know, OK, it is your own you know, project. OK, so now I want to deploy this project. You know, I want to. You know, uh, maybe publish this project over here you know, so that. Somebody access this synergetic spoke dot com, you know, they should get you know, these kinds of output. So for that, I'll just go and uh, you know declare you know um, optionally these two variables. Okay, it is not compulsory, but uh, you know if you're using in the command, you know okay, you should use. But it's not compulsory. You know? So let let me use resource group. So what is a resource group? Uh, in which resource group I'm having. So this is my resource group AZ204 training. That is my resource group. OK, so I'm just declaring a variable. So I've declared a variable called as resource group. OK, what is my application name? Your application name is. Synergetics book. So I just press enter. And once I. You know, OK, um, declare these two variable. You know, I can make use of these two variable. You know, in the command. So let me now deploy this application. Okay, so now I am trying to deploy. You know, okay, whatever be the files that is I am having in this HTML docs hello world, you know, folder. So that files I am trying to publish, you know, on this uh, you know application, which is this application. You know, so let's go and press enter. 
which saying already exist. So if it is already exist, um, should have some option. Or let me just go and use what some other name of this uh, you know, application. So I'm just declaring 202, you know, Synergetic Spoke 202 is the app name I'm just declaring. OK. And I'm just trying to publish this, whatever be the files and folders which is available inside this. You know, so I'm trying to publish on that new uh, you know, application. OK, so you will find, uh, you know, OK, there is one more application will be created. So you will find one application will be created over here, new application. And on that new application, you know, your files will be uh, deployed. OK. We'll see this uh, after a while. You know, so it is creating, you know, uh, this synergetic spoke 202. This is the web app it is creating. And once this web app is created, uh, you will see. Yeah, uh, so once the application is created, you know, let me now just refresh this. You know, so you can see this. And once you see this. Once I click on this browse button. OK, I should see uh, you know, OK, some output over here. OK, and this is the output. You know, I'm getting it from you know, that project HTML basic project. And if you like to, you know, see that HTML files, you know, which has, you know, I have uploaded on this, so you can go and see those file. Okay, by opening the app service editor, you know, okay, you can app service editor, and you can just go and, uh, you know, have a look at uh, all the files which are present over there. OK. And it is available uh, online. Huh? You know, OK, uh, so anybody can access this website, you know, OK, as if you know, OK, this is just like, uh, you know, any other website we, you are having in the internet. You can access this website, uh, you know, online. OK, so you can see this. So this is showing you all the files which are present, you know. So. Let me just open index.html. OK, and I'll just go and change this header as. I'll just say as version 2. OK, so currently it is showing you, you know, this header. OK, but as soon as I save this, OK, this is automatically saved by the way. So this is saved. Now I'll just go and refresh this. OK, so here you should see no version. two. So whatever you are changing, you know, OK, so those changes will be online. You know, OK, immediately will be taken to the online. OK. OK, 
Okay, so. So if you go to the overview section. You know, so you will get uh, you know, a lot of uh, meaningful information such as. Uh, uh, what is a resource group name? You know, what's our domain name? What's the app service plan? OK, what what is the operating system which is used? OK, and uh, you know, by the way, you know, which is the. Uh, you know, subscription that used. You know? And you know, currently this application is uh, running or not. OK, so that kind of information you will get. Uh, you know? OK, so look at this. And so I will get the information about app service plan, you know. So if I'm having an app service plan, you know, okay, and later on I decide to change, you know, okay, to upgrade or to downgrade a plan, you know, okay. So I can, you know, choose that also, you know. So I can upgrade this plan, I can downgrade this plan, I can, you know, okay, decide, you know. After I create uh, you know, this also. OK. So once I create this as a free, you know, later on my application become, you know, OK, very popular, you know, and I want to, you know, OK, go for a production based application or any kind of, a, you know, OK, nicer plan. I can just go and upgrade my plan also. OK. So you can upgrade your plan or you can downgrade also your plan, you know, OK, by using this option. OK. So whatever changes, you know, OK, ultimately I have made in the application, I will be able to see you know those changes over here. OK, so that is our first you know, demo. What we have done. OK, so I have. You know, taken this code from a Git repository you know, from this Git repository. And I have directly deploy that code, you know, OK, in my web app. OK, so these are the two steps we have performed, you know, so that whatever be the code which are available in that Git repository, you know, OK, it will be available in this web app, you know, and that code. You can also check from here. OK, and there is an option called as. Development tool. OK, and uh, under development tool, you know, app service editor. You know, so you can click on this. OK, and you can open your app service editor over here. OK. But of course, uh, normally, you know, editor will be available on your local machine. OK. So how to take this on our local machine? OK, and how to work you know, with our local machine? You know, we'll see that you know, OK um, in the next demo. Huh? So same application what we have over here, you know, we will uh, we will try and publish it from our local machine rather than pulling it from a GitHub. You know, we will publish it from our local machine and we will push it. Uh, you know, okay, you know, over here in the app service, you know, and probably we'll push it uh, to this app service which we have created earlier. You know, so we'll do that. Uh, you know. Uh, but before doing that, let us wait for uh, you know 15 minutes of a break. OK. And. Uh, it's four five uh, we will come back at uh, 420. OK, so let's take 15 minutes of a break and uh, we will come back and we will uh, know, okay, complete the other demo.
Yeah. Uh, P. Kale is asking. We already had, already been answered. If code file is present at our local machine, not on it. Yeah. So we'll uh, see that anyways in the next demo. Uh, you know, there are multiple ways. Uh, you, know, you can publish. Uh, you know, entire code. You know, uh, you can publish the zip file also. Okay. From your local machine. And we'll see that. Hi guys, Chaitali here. As we are on break, make sure you redeem your learning achievement batch. I have shared the steps for it in the chat box. So follow the steps and get your learning achievement batch activated. Thank you.
Hello, Chaitanya, you are saying something?
Okay, huh? so we'll we'll be starting, uh, you know, post break. I hope uh, my voice is audible. So the next uh, demo, uh, which we are going to see, you know, uh, as I said, whatever be the application, you know, I'm having. Okay. Uh, and to that application, I want to publish the code from my local drive. So, for example, you know, over here, I've just created a web app. Okay. The name of that web app is Synergetic Spoke. You know, um, and, you know, I'm having a code over here. Okay. And from that, I want to just, you know, okay, uh, deploy. You know, uh, from that, I want to, you know, take the code from my local machine and uh, we'll just go, go and publish it over here. Okay. So we'll be, uh, you know, exploring first, uh, you know, uh, different deployment options which are available with us. If you just go and look at uh, this deployment section, the two options uh, are available, which are deployment slot, you know, okay, and deployment center. Uh, so we'll be understanding uh, deployment center in this uh, example. Uh, in the next example, we'll be understanding, you know, what is deployment slot and uh, you know, um, you know how it is uh, going to come into a picture of, uh, okay, the web application. So we'll understand this in a separate demo uh, in the next demo. So we'll firstly see uh, what is deployment center. You know? So deployment center is a place uh, you know, where uh, you will be able to see what are different deployment options which are available. Okay. So under deployment center, you know, okay, if you just go and you know go to the setting, you know. And you will get a different options, you know. So we'll have to choose. Okay, uh, over here we are having uh, many different options. You know, so we'll have to choose. Um, you know, where is our code? You know, so of course my code is present in my uh, local machine. You know, okay. If the code is present in your local machine, you know, okay. And uh, you know, uh, if let's suppose say on that local folder I'm having a get repository you know and i want to publish that git repository you know over here okay so in the second demo you know, uh, we will do something like this you know? so to try and understand okay in front of you uh, you should be able to see a whiteboard if, you're, if it is not visible, uh, please uh, you know, let me know in the chat box. Okay, I have opened the you know, whiteboard in front of you. And we already have created um, the web app. The name, name of uh, you know, web app is uh, Synergetics. Okay, dot, uh, you know, okay, Azure dot uh, com. Uh, ultimately, uh, you know, the URL will be what? Synergeticspoke.com. Okay, so this is present on my, you know, okay, Azure. Where is this present? Of course, this is present on the Azure portal. Okay. Now, somewhere over here, you know, I'm having a machine. You know, this is my local machine. Okay, this is my local machine. Okay, and that local machine is having some kind of a code. And as of now, I'm having, uh, you know, .NET code over here. 
Okay. So I'm having some dot net code. Okay. So whatever be the dot net code you are having, you know, okay. So I want to push it to the, you know, okay, uh, this synergetic spoke dot com. I want to publish this to the you know, synergetic spoke dot com. You know? So there are two different ways uh, you know uh, you can do it. So first of all, uh, you will be you know uh, able to do it. Uh, you know, okay, by using a git. You know the first option will be trying with the help of a git. Okay, and second option. Okay, in the next demo. Okay, uh, we will be publishing the entire code. You know uh, from our Visual Studio. You know okay to the you know uh, to the uh, Azure portal. Okay, so for this example, I will not use uh, you know, okay, the Visual Studio. I will just go and you know, okay, work on the command prompt, you know, just to push it to the you know remote repository. So for this, okay. So this is also having some kind of uh, you know, okay, uh, Git URL. Okay, so this is. In our case, this is acting as a remote. Okay, this is acting as a remote repo, remote repository. You know, so somewhere over here, you know, okay, over here, I'm having something called as a local repository. This is, uh, you know, consider this is as if my machine. Okay, this is my machine, my computer, and you know, in this I'm having okay, there's something called as a local repository. So let's say this is my local repo. Okay, so we are having something called as a you know, okay. Staging area. So I'm now I'm talking about you know, okay, the git. I'm Talking specific to the Git, you know, so I'm having something called as a staging area. Okay, and I'm having you know something called as a you know okay, uh, the working directory. Okay, so of course. Uh, of course, you will be having your code, you know, in the working directory, you know. So if you have to, you know, add your working directory code to the staging area, you know, there is a command called as, you know, okay, there is a command called as git add. And whichever file you would like to add to the working, you know, to from the working directory to the staging area, you know, and whichever be the modified file, you know, you will be adding that to the staging area, you know. So dot indicates uh, what all the modified file, you know, so uh, it will be uh, uh, storing inside the staging area. So once my files are inside the staging area. I can keep or I can you know commit them into the local repository by using git commit. You know, and I'll have to specify the commit message. You know, okay. Once the code is available in my local repository, you know, it is ready to, you know, push it to my remote repository, you know. So once I push this code into my remote repository, you know, and what is that uh, command to push the code into your remote repository, you know, so you are having a simple command called as git push, you know, so you are having git push. Okay, and optionally, uh, you know, I may have to specify, you know, okay, uh, you know, different option called as hyphen u, okay, and name of origin, okay, and name of my branch. 
okay so this is the command you know will take your code you know to the remote repository and once the code is available you know on the remote repository anybody you know sitting at any corner of a world you know they will be able to access my application because you know okay it is available on the azure portal okay so anybody you know who are sitting on the you know okay on their machine who are having access or internet they they will be able to access my application okay so anything i want to make a change you know i can do it that change locally i can test that change you know okay locally and i can push the changes to the remote so once i push the changes to the remote you know okay so that changes you know users will be also able to see okay so that kind of a you know okay um, example we are going to try so i hope uh, you have got an idea you know what we are going to try okay so we'll be taking our code you know okay first so currently uh, i don't have any kind of uh, you know files inside my working directory my working directory is a blank you know so i will be you know okay very first thing i will be cloning this repository which is available on my uh, remote no i'll be cloning that repository into my local repository you know once i do that cloning you know we will do you know step by step for the further task okay Oh, sorry i was on the call thank you. so uh we'll be starting you know okay so now if i just go and you know look at my web app you know this is my web app if i come to the deployment center you know i will get this option you know so i have to choose local git okay so if i choose that local git you know okay so that means uh, uh, your code is present on the local git and from the local git you will be pushing it, it to the you know app you know? so i'm saving this you know so once i save this you know setting you know i will get one git url you know and that will be acting as a remote url and so it is configuring your remote url okay and this is the your you know your remote url and we'll have to copy this url we'll have to clone this url but you know to clone this url we'll have to specify some credential which is provided by the azure you know 
So let us configure those credential. So these credential uh, we we may have to specify. And by the way, over here I do not have any kind of a password, so I can create a password of my own choice. I'll just let me just go and enter my own password. Let me re-enter a password. I'm setting my passwords so I can you know, set my password anything. Or you can set your username also anything. You know, OK, but it has to follow this you know, syntax. So you can follow your username, anything, but you, you should follow you know, this syntax. But by the way, I'm OK with that. You know, OK, so I'll just go and keep this as it is. Username and I'll save this changes. OK, once you save the changes, uh, you remember the password. OK, and once once the password is also ready, you know. OK, you're ready to take a clone. So I'll be taking a clone. Let's copy this URL. OK. Let's come to the. You know, your workspace. And over here I'm just creating. Uh, maybe this is my. Second exercise, so I'm just creating a folder called lab two. And inside the lab two, I'm opening the command prompt. Okay, and on the command prompt, you know, I'll type get clone and that URL which I have copied. I'll press enter. Okay, so we'll have to provide um, a username and the password. So let me copy uh, the username. So this is your username. So this is your username. Okay, and password, whatever you have set just now, you'll have to type that password. Okay, so once I do this, OK, um, so my cloning is successful. You know? OK, since I do not have any kind of a code, you know, OK, it's saying, uh, you know, it's giving you some warning, you know, you, you have cloned an empty directory. You know? So you do not have any kind of a code which is present. OK, of course, I'll be adding the code, you know. So just go out of this and just go and find out the code. You know, okay, and it is the same code you know, which we have just now added. Okay, so the only difference is that the code is I'm adding this code from my local drive now. So let me copy all. Let me go to the folder. Over here, paste that code. Once the code is available, Now, next thing, what you can say? So, for example, if I want to add this from the working directory to the staging area of a git, you know, okay, then you are having something called as a git add command. And so, just to check how many you know files that have been modified, you know, you can just go and say git status. Of course, uh, this is not a Git repository, so your Git repository is Synergetic Spoke. You know? So I should go inside Synergetic Spoke. OK, and I should say Git status. You can see all these files which have been modified over here. OK, just to stage them all at once, I can say Git add dot 
That means all the files I want to stage. Once I stage, you know, I can just go and confirm. You know, so all these files have been staged. Okay, and once you stage all these files, you know, okay, you are going to say what commit. So whatever files you have stage, you know, okay. Then you say commit. Okay, your files will be, you know, okay, present in your local repository. You know, so your files will be available in your local repository. Okay. So it is not yet gone your over here. You know, it is available over here in the local repository, which is in your machine only. OK. So once the file are present inside your local repository. So name of my branch over here. Not showing anything. Okay, let's go and see. Uh, what is the name of my branch? Because I observe there's some problem because you are having a name of a branch over here as a main, and I believe I've noticed over here when we create no the default name of the branch is going to come as a master. So hopefully it will not give you a problem. So I'll say we get push. And I should have a origin already. You know, uh, get. So origin is already present. OK, since I done what get clone. So get push hyphen u. Origin you know, me. And let's see whether this is working or not. Otherwise, we'll have to rename this. Okay. Over here it is saying the current deployment branch is master. So the name of the branch which is present over here, it is by default name of the branch is master. And over here I'm having a name of a branch as a main. So that is causing me a problem as expected. So let me just rename. Go to rename this. OK, I'll just go and say command git branch hyphen M master. And. So now. Your branch name has been renamed to master. And once it is renamed, I'll just go and say. Git push hyphen u origin master. Okay, and I'll try this once again. Yeah, so that has been successful. You know, so now once it is successful, you can just go and try this. So let me just close this. You know, so this is your synergetic spoke. And if you refresh this you know, over here, you will get uh, you know, that uh, page output. You know? As expected, we are getting this output over here.
okay so now uh, from the local drives you know you have pushed the code you know into the you know, uh, the web app okay and if i just go and give you this link also you can also you know uh, go and access this web app you know? so for just checking you know, can you access this or not you can just go and you know, copy this url from chat box i have given you and you try out this url and paste this url you know on your browser so you'll be able to see like this okay so later on you know uh, you made any kind of a changes in the application okay so i just made a changes in the application so let me open vs code now okay so i'm doing you know some kind of a changes you know and as we did the last time also changes like this you know so let us do a changes over here so once i do a changes okay in this file that whatever be the changes i have done it will be recognized by the get isn't it you know okay it will be recognized by the get okay and just to see verify how many file got changed i can say git status so you can confirm that you know okay one file have been changed okay so if you want to add that to a stage you can say git add okay or you can say the name of the file also and once you say git commit hyphen m okay so i'll give any meaningful commit message okay so once i say commit it will be available where it will be available on you know my local repo it is not available on here you know so as of now i can't see the changes which i made you know over here as of now i can't see can you see version 2 no i can't see you know but that changes will get reflected you know once you go and push those changes from the local repository to the remote repository you know okay and how to push it by using git push okay and optionally you can say hyphen new chain okay so once this push is successful you know you will be able to see the changes over here and you know okay uh, everybody able to see those changes whatever changes i have made okay. so this push is successful now i can go and refresh my code you know okay i will get over there version 2 okay so if you are accessing also you should also get uh, you know no version 2 of this website isn't it you know so this is one of the way uh, you know okay to take your code if it is available on the local drive you know okay uh, this is one of the way to take it uh, on the you know a remote location on the azure portal okay and just like you know earlier way uh, you can access the code since i have pushed the code only i can access that code you know uh, in the app service editor you know if you go and click on that app service editor 
uh, you should be able to see that code. Okay, so I click on this open editor. I should be able to see similar kind of a code. Okay, so it is getting loaded. Okay, so there you go. Uh, so your code is available over here, and you can see in the index dot HTML so version two. No? So if you just go and try one last time, let's make version three. Let's save it. Okay, we'll have to commit this changes to the local drive first. I'll be adding to the staging directory. I'll be committing to the local drive. You know, once I commit to the local drive, you no, know, it won't be available over here as of now. You know, so if you just look at, you know, it is not available till now. But once you say push, OK, and this push is successful, then you will be able to access. OK, that code over here. OK, so now I should see uh, this code. So I'll just refresh this. And I can see version 3. This is version 3 which I have just now updated and of course you will be able to see the output also. OK. So now but you know whatever changes. From a local machine currently I am doing. I am doing directly on the you know OK uh, that application. OK, I am doing. As of now, whatever changes I am doing, you know, that directly I am doing on the application, you know, and I do not have any kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, any kind of, I don't get any kind of a chance to test my application, you know. So if everything is happened correctly, you know, then I can revert, uh, you know, then I can take it to the production. OK, if um, anything is uh, any feature is not working as expected, I can revert those changes. You know, so if I want to do that kind of a thing, you know, so that kind of a facility is not available over here since I'm doing since I'm adding directly to the production slot. What I'm doing? I'm adding my code you know, from a local drive to directly to the production slot. OK, so that comes to my next, you know, OK, point. What do you mean by slot? You know, OK, and slot is deployment slot. What do you mean by deployment slot? OK, deployment slot is a kind of a, you know, uh, you know, uh, application holder only you know okay you can say um, if i create a deployment slot you know okay i'm just as if i'm creating another application okay so that deployment slot option you know you will get and the deployment you will get deployment slot and currently when I create an application, you know, there's only one slot is going to create, you know, and that slot is production slot. So currently here, if you look at as of now, we are having only one slot available. Uh, 
Okay, I have just clicked on uh, deployment slot. So that will show you. That is loading currently. Uh, it will show you. Currently, it is one slot is is available, which is our production slot. So whatever code we are adding from the local machine that will be pushed directly to the production slot and production slot is the one slot which is available to the all users. OK, so every slot you will see you know, that slot will got a URL. Unique URL. OK. Can you see this? Deployment slot. Production slot you can see. OK, and out of that 100% traffic is uh, redirect to the you know, production slot. You know, so every slot you create, you know, OK, it will have a unique URL. OK, so I will just go and create one more slot. OK, and that slot name I'll just give maybe testing slot or very famous name staging slot. OK. Can you see this? So once I create a staging slot, you know it will have a unique URL. You know, so synergetic spoke hyphen staging dot Azure website dot net. So like this, we will be able to access our application and once I go and add the slot. So let's say add our slot. OK. And what I want to do. OK, meanwhile, this is getting created. We'll understand. So already understood, you know, OK, there is. OK, one. App service. OK, we are having our code. You know on our local machine. No, OK, and let's understand this is our local machine. OK, uh, we already understood, uh, you know, OK, uh, there is something called as a uh, working directory, staging directory, you know, staging area, uh, local directory and local repository. We are having local repository, staging area, and working directory. You know, and over here, you know, we are having one web app. Okay, what is the name of this web app? You know, synergeticsfox.com. So. So I'll just name it over here. Okay, so this is the name of my no, okay, uh, the app, which is acting as my production slot. Okay. And just now I have created you know, something called as a. You know, OK, my staging slot. What is this? OK, my staging slot. Just this. OK, and. This is my production slot. So this is my production slot. This is my staging slot. OK, staging slot also got one unique URL. OK, and the name is. iPhone staging. Dot Azure website. Dot com. You know? So that will be ultimately me. OK. 
so i want to do it like this you know okay so once i push the code from my local machine you know okay that code should push to the staging slot you know and once it is you know available on the staging slot you know okay uh few people you know okay uh, who will be acting as a tester okay uh, maybe uh, from our team you know okay or maybe from you know client side you know okay some representative you know okay will test your application okay whether you know whether that feature release you know is working expectedly or not you know so whatever be the changes i have done into my code you know uh, as per my you know changes uh, you know expected to in the future so i've done that changes inside you know my application i have incorporated my feature you know and that feature will be testing some of the user you know so this staging slot you know that testing will happen okay but till now you know okay uh, by that time okay the users the end users actual users of your application they will go and use this website this url okay and they will be accessing the earlier version of your application only okay so this new version or new feature which you have incorporated it will be available on the staging slot you know once you go and push that code to the remote repo it will be available in the staging slot and once your testing is successful your testers are happy you know and they said you know we can go ahead and release this okay and once that is happened you know somebody needs to you know go and do some approval you know and once i approve this i will go and swipe you know whatever be the code is present inside production that will be available in the staging and whatever be the code present currently inside staging that will be available in the you know production so staging we are having a little code you know okay so it will be available in the production and once in once it is available in the production your end user will be able to access it you know so end user may be sitting at their home okay okay sitting at their home okay from a laptop or from a desktop they will be able to access it okay they do not require any kind of a ur new url you know? okay so we'll be accessing okay this application only okay and tester will be accessing this application okay so this generally you know normally you know called as blue green deployment pattern okay and this is uh, uh, one of the uh, you know okay most followed deployment pattern in the industry also okay okay so this is your blue green deployment okay so initially you will go and you know okay push the code to the staging slot you know this url will be accessing you know uh, your tester tester will go and do some testing once they approve you know okay i will go and do what swap okay and once the swapping of this slot is happened you know okay whatever be the code available in the staging slot will be available inside the production slot okay and whichever code available inside production slot it will be available in the staging slot are you getting it so i think okay just one say this and let me you know test this okay uh, practically also 
Okay, we will we will see this practically. Okay, so my you know slot has been created. Okay, so you can see this. There are multiple slot has been created. Uh, you know, you are having a production slot and you are having staging slot. And now, if you just go and see the deployment center now. Once you create one more slot, if you see uh, this is having uh, this is referring to that uh, URL, but let me just go to the the next slot. Let me click on this. Okay. Once I click on this, I'll come to the deployment center. I think uh, one person is asking how much scope do you does the PowerShell in this topic? How much scope does PowerShell has in this topic? I'm asking this. Okay. Uh, PowerShell, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, 204 certification examination, PowerShell and uh, Azure CLI are equally important. You know, okay, you should aware how to create a resources. Uh, you know, okay, at least four resources by using a PowerShell or you know, and by using a CLI. But uh, you know, this session, you know, okay, uh, as far as this session goes, uh, you know, we are not going to see anything related to the PowerShell. Okay. So if you want to know more about the PowerShell, you know, you have to register, uh, you know, OK, uh, our uh, uh, no, open session, which are available. Or, you know, there are a lot of material uh, uh, available on the, you know, OK, uh, on the Microsoft uh, official curriculum also. You can just go go through that. OK, so now let me just go to the. Local get. Okay, and let me save it. Okay, so now this is going to give you a unique URL. Can you see this? So this is my staging slot URL. Okay, and let me copy this. And if you just look at currently, OK, currently there is nothing present on my staging slot. So this is my staging slot. If you just look at. This is my production slot, you know, okay, without this staging. OK, so on my production slot, this application is working. But on my staging slot, there is no code present. So what I'm doing, I'm adding this. You know, I'm adding from this some kind of a code into my staging slot also. So for that. You know, I have clicked on a deployment center and let me once again copy that uh, the URL. OK. So let us copy this URL. And. 
currently if you look at uh, you know which is having only one origin which is pushing the code directly to the production slot you know but i should go and create no i should go and add you no know, one more remote url okay so i'm adding one more url so git remote add you know this is the name of my uh, you know origin okay this can be uh, any name but you should give the path and present okay and you can just see there are two slots or oh, sorry there are two origins so this is pointing to the production slot this is pointing to the you know staging slot and whatever changes now i am doing you know, so currently i am having this version 3 now i'm just making it as a version 4 and now this version 4 changes instead of making it to the production slot directly you know i will be making it to the staging slot you know so let me just take version 4 changes okay and let me push it to the staging slot so rather than using origin master origin staging okay master okay and we will have to take a same id password which we have set so this is our username and we'll have to type a same password and once i type the password okay so now it is pushing the data or pushing the code to my staging slot okay once the code is pushed to the staging slot now you should be able to access you know this is your production slot let's say and this is my staging slot you know once i do refresh i should be able to access version 4 this is my staging slot and this is my production slot version 3 no so tester are going to do some kind of a testing over here you know and once they are happy you know you can go and say okay i want to swipe okay so you, you can get the option of swiping over here under deployment slot or you will get that same option over here under overview of also okay so you can click on any option so once you do swiping so you will have to specify you know source and target you know so whatever be the code i am having in the staging slot i am you know okay uh, pushing this or i am i want to swipe this with the production slot okay and i'll do swiping and once this swiping is successful okay then 
I will be able to see, you know, okay, in the production slot version four, okay, and in the staging slot I will see version three. Okay, once this swiping is successful. Okay, so currently that swiping is happening. Okay, so my swiping is successful now. Okay, and uh, once I do the refresh over here, I can see version three. And over here, I can see version four. One person is asking a question. How swiping is actually work? Okay, if we swipe, then we have new code in the production and old code in the staging. Next time, when we next time when we will take pull of staging, we'll have old changes, not the latest changes. Okay, so I'll try and answer uh, your question. One question. No, I'll I'll, I'll try and answer this. You know? uh, so if you look at this, uh, you know, diagram. I've just created this diagram over here like this. Okay, so once you once you go and you know, okay, uh, uh, push any kind of a changes. You know, so that changes, you know, will be, you know, present in the staging slot. Okay, that changes will be, you know, present in the staging slot. Okay, and once it is, you know, present in the staging slot, you know, okay, so it is having that separate code base. You know, as of now, you know, I'm having a separate code base, separate repository for this staging slot and for this, uh, you know, production slot. You know, and and whatever you know, whenever I do a swiping, you know, okay. So this code, you know, whatever be the code available in the production slot, which will be you know, uh, uh, you know, added inside a staging slot, and the code which is available in the staging slot, which will be added in the production slot. So which is happening swiping. So it is not happening a merging of a code. You remember that it is not happening a merging. Whatever code is available inside production, you know, that will become, you know, the code of my staging. And staging will become a production. Okay. And anyways, you know, okay, I'm having a latest code in my, you know, okay, application. Okay, on my local drive. Okay. And if, you know, other people are, you know, uh, taking that code, you know, okay. So I can understand your you're coming from what uh, you know i can understand so if some other person is taking you know the changes after the swiping from this so that person we we will get the old code so is that that is your question so i can understand but uh, you know after the changes you know okay if the person is going to take a you know a pull from the staging then of course you know that person is going to get uh, the old code only you know that person will not get a New code, you know? so they can either take uh, you know the pull from in the production, or you know uh, they can take a pull from before swiping.
okay but in this scenario you know the merging is not happening you know okay currently swiping is happening i hope uh, you know i was able to answer your question Uh, but uh, for doing a CICD, uh, you will not do it uh, manually, no. You know? Okay, uh, you will go and create some kind of a pipeline. You know? Okay, so whatever currently it is happening, you know, you will be doing that thing from the pipeline. You know, so you will go and create a build pipeline. You know, once your build pipeline is executed successfully, then your release pipeline will be executed, and you know, uh, from the release pipeline, you know, your code will be published. Okay, so currently I'm showing you, you know, that process manually, you know, but actually that process is going to happen, uh, you know, uh, by using a pipeline. Okay, so that uh, take us to the you know last part of a uh, you know of a session. So once we have understood this, you know, okay, so slot, okay. So that us take us to the next part. So we are going to create. So we are going to you know simulate something like this. You know, we try and understand. <laughs> okay uh, so you understand this way uh, i will have you know so we are going to create something like this so i will go and create um, something called as a, a web api that will be acting as a you know our rest restful api Okay, but ultimately I'll be, you know, creating an app service only for posting this web app, web API. You know, so so I'll be calling this as web API. Web API will go and connect to your okay something called as a storage account. Okay, so storage account, let me go and connect. Okay, so uh, whatever be the data, you know, okay, my client is giving, you know, I will give it to the storage account. You know, storage account will go and save that data. Okay, and uh, uh, if my client is requesting for some kind of a data, so this web API is going to give a request to the you know storage account and storage account will give you that data. You know, so in this storage account, we will go and create one container. And that container will have a some set of images. You know, some you know some sort of a images. So I'll have you know, some set of a images. Okay, so now this is acting as my you know web API. You know? Okay, or that we can in other word we can call this web API as our backend application. Okay, so I will go and create you know another application. And that application will be acting as our front end application. Okay. And and 
and that front end application will be acting as our normal uh, you know web application okay so web application will be you know this front end application uh, will be accessed by your client you know so client will open a browser you know and uh, give the url of uh, your application okay so once the url of the application is you know okay given uh, so that request will be sent to this okay and once you send the request you know okay so this will connect to the back end you know web api okay the web api will go and connect to the ultimately a storage account you know storage account whatever be the data coming you know whatever be the images coming you know okay so those images will be returned to the web api web api will give it to the you know application web app and you know this application you know okay will ultimately give that you know data back to the user so this kind of a communication you know we are going to, uh, trying to achieve you know okay um so hopefully it should not take uh, you know uh, much time because uh, i'm having the code ready with me you know okay so it will not take uh, you know uh, much time as you thinking and you know? so if my code is not ready you know okay and if i'm setting up from the scratch this example you know so itself this example is only going to take uh, you know okay Uh, maybe six to seven hour of a time, you know. Okay, so it's you know that, you know. Okay, big example is. Okay, but hopefully, uh, in our case, we should be able to finish this within an half an hour. Let's try and see this. Okay, how this can be, you know, created. Okay, um. So we'll see this in action. Just go and close this. Okay, let me just go and close. Okay, ha. Uh, so we'll need one storage account so let me just go and create storage account so i'm creating a storage account quickly so storage account is uh, one of the you know storage service which we are having and storage account name i can give any name okay okay so i'll just try and give this name okay and let's see whether this is available or not so hopefully this is available so your storage account name should be uh, globally unique you know because it is having also a unique url you know and then um, redundancy what you are choosing grs lrs you know that you can select okay i'm okay with uh, grs okay um next option i'll say review and create Okay. 
uh, meanwhile uh, my storage account is getting created uh, you know let me just go and create the app to save the time so let me just go and create my storage account is created i think uh, let me just go and select this i'm choosing windows it is loading the plan Yeah, it has pick up that uh, you know last plan which we have created. We are okay with that. And the rest of the thing you know uh, looks good. Um, so let's just say. Review and create. Okay. So you know. Uh, let's this uh, you know, create, and let me go back to the storage account. And the storage account which I have created just now. This is the storage account we have created. And as you can see, you know, which is having four types of uh, you know services, storage services. Uh, you know, your first one is a blob, you know, your container, file share, queue, and table. Okay. So we are going to use for this example container. Okay. So I will store any kind of a blob data, binary large object. So I'll create a container. Okay, the name of the container is images. I want to, uh, you know, okay, make it accessible to the public guy. So I'll just select blob as a access level. Okay, and once my blob is ready, okay, I will go and upload one image okay so so let's say i'm uploading this image uh, maybe burger i'm image I'm uploading okay so i'm uploading that image The image has been uploaded, you know. And now, if you just look at you know this diagram, I'll just take you through this diagram once again. What I'm done. So we have created this storage account you know, where uh, it is responsible for storing the images. We have created uh, you know uh, this application, you know. Which is responsible for you know uh, folding um, uh, any kind of a project. Okay. Uh, uh, which may be connecting you know to the storage account. Okay. So to this you know I will go and add a project. Okay. And this project, this web web API. Uh, will be responsible for connecting to this storage account. You know? So we'll go and connect to this storage account and we will retrieve the images by using this web API. OK, so we'll try that first. So my storage account is created. My web application is also created. OK, so once my web application is created, you know, so I'll just go and 
add this is my demo number i think four so let me just go and create one folder called as lab lab4 and from this lab4 i will just go and add okay Okay, so this API, so whatever be the code over here I'm having, so I would like to you know uh, push that code to the to this particular uh, you know okay uh, web application which is created just now. Let me just go there. Okay. To this web application. Okay. But I said this web API will connect to the storage account. So how they will come to know which storage account we have to connect? You know? Okay. So for that, you know, so I need to set up, you know, the configuration. Okay. So you go to this uh, image uh, IMG API, click on this configuration. Meanwhile, this is uh, loading. Let me just go and Open this in the duplicate tab. Come to the storage account. Let me go inside the storage account. And if you look at this storage account, storage account is having something called as an access key. You know, you have to click on this access key, and that will give you, you know, the option. Or less connection string. So this will help you, you know. So this will help other application to connect to this storage account. Okay. So I should take this connection string copy, and I should go back to the web app. You know, application setting, new application setting. I should go and click on this. I can give any name. And I can paste that URL. OK, whatever URL you know, I have copied, I can paste that URL. You can see. OK. You know, so this will hopefully will allow you to you know, connect the, you know, the web app with your storage account. OK, so with this connection has been, you know, set up. Uh, you know, we have set up this connection. Backend and storage account, you know, now let us go and add some code. That will. You know, that will allow us to you know, uh, add uh, that code. So let me go to the uh, image API overview. So before you do this, you just go and save this. Without saving, this setting will not take it back. Okay, once this is saved, you know I can come to the application okay. and to this application i want to add a code from my local my local repository now i'm having a code over here you know 
So I'm having this zip file. So I want to add that zip file. So I'll just copy this. Okay, but before I do this, because my code is not present on my cloud, my code is present on my local drive. Right? So I should log in. So I, using this easy login, I'll be doing login. Okay, since I logged in, uh, you know, already. Okay, this will take me to the the prompt once again. And after this, I will go and copy uh, the code. This code. And I'll put it over here. And I'll just go and say. Okay, AZ two zero four and my app resource group name is I think AZ two zero four training. Which AZ two zero four training. Okay, my API dot zip is present. Okay, that I want to publish to uh, my web app. The name of my web app is this. So this is the name of my web app. Okay, so I'll just go and press enter. Okay, uh, this should start your deployment. And you know whatever code you are having, you know locally, you know it will be available uh, on that uh, app. And once this deployment is successful, okay, so my deployment is successful. So I'll go and check this URL. Okay, so I access this URL okay. on the web browser. There is some problem is coming on this image controller. Let's see this. Okay, and this open my connection configuration. Meanwhile, I just go and open this also.
is correct and I'm taking this to be let me come to this I was trying this example from reason to refer the lab document. I'll just go through and refer that lab document. And is there anything wrong I'm doing? I'm doing that step once again. It has consumed our time, so we may not be able to finish this example. So I just try to, you know, fix this at least. So we have come to the setting access key. We are copying this connection string. And that connection string was expected to Application specific. 
Okay. I'm trying to create this application setting once again. And I'll copy this. That's okay. So now it has been uploaded. Now this is showing me why this is so you can see this magic. <laughs> so maybe it was taking some time to up, update, you know. So now this has worked properly. So currently we are having only one image. Okay. So that's why it is showing you what this burger dot jpg. Now, if I just go and you know, okay, just upload another image to the container. So I'll upload one more image to the container. You know, so let us uh, go and add grilled cheese sandwich image. Uh, and once I go and add grilled cheese sandwich image. Add to this container. And upload this file. Once my file is uploaded. OK, I can see. This. You know, I can refresh this, you know, so you will be able to see two images. Okay, 